Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick video about the Apple iPhone XS, XS Max, and XR. For those of you that are unaware, the specs have finally been revealed. The mystery no longer is a mystery, and that's because China published the specifications. In order for the phone to actually go on sale in China, that has to be public knowledge. And so here we've got the XS. Again, that's the $1,000 flagship entry level, 64 gigs of internal storage, your OLED display. Then you can step up to the more expensive six and a half inch XS Max or step down to the XR, which has an IPS 720p uh, display, a little under 800p. Uh, that reminds me much of 2012. Uh, they all have that Bionic A12 processor, which is great, incredibly efficient, uh, but is really all about synthetic benchmarking that really I can't do anything with. Uh, they did shrink the, the chipset size uh, in terms of their ARM architecture. Kudos for that. But again, since it only works in iOS devices like the iPhone and iPad, you're really not going to be able to tell anyone that it outperforms anything made by Qualcomm, literally. I want to get that out of the way. And those of you who say you're iPhone users for the experience and not because of the specifications, you're paying for both of those things. Newsflash, everybody is. Whether you're buying an Apple product or a Samsung product, it doesn't matter what operating system, Windows, you're paying for a user experience. And your user experience isn't just software, it's the hardware that drives it as well. And I have to say, after seeing these, the reveal on the specs, first of all, the XR, only three gigs of RAM, okay? The XS Max and XS both have four gigs of RAM, so welcome to 2012. Uh, that's the first thing, 2013. You know, those are the type of specifications you're getting. Now, even though they say their displays are running uh, at, or they're giving us native resolutions, uh, I wonder if they're actually going to even run at the resolution that we're given. But there you can see three gigs of RAM in the XR, uh, four gigs and four gigs. The Note 9 has six on the base model, eight on the 512 gig, uh, the half terabyte model, and of course, expandable storage that these phones do not have. And this again, all three phones are sold in 64, uh, 120, uh, excuse me, two, uh, 256 and 512 gig capacity. Um, with prices ranging all the way up to $1,450 for the XS Max. Now, the cameras are the same on all three phones. Bear that in mind. Batteries are not. So here we finally have the milliamp hour uh, ratings. And as you can see in the XS, we've got a 2658 milliamp hour battery. Now, the Note 8 had 3,300 milliamp hours, I believe. The Note 9 has 4,000. The 6.5-inch screen XS Max has a 3174 milliamp hour battery. So we're still not even at Note 8 size uh, battery capacity, even though it's got a huge footprint, this 6.5-inch monster. I mean, it is a giant phone. And then the XR with its measly you know, 720p IPS display, that 6.1-inch screen, the reason it can stay up to snuff, even though it's got the same processor and a little less RAM, 3 instead of 4, as these two uh, bigger twins or relatives have, is because it has a comparable size battery um, almost to the max, which is 2942. So I guess somehow they decided to be more generous. The battery life was going to be a big selling point for the XR because outside of the processor and the camera capability, the 4K 60P, there is no other real selling factor to the XR. Uh, GSM Arena not hiding anything, showing you that that, you know, that notch is there, unlike Apple, who continues to run that globe uh, sphere over the phone to make it appear as if the, the notch is not a notch. It is. Uh, but there you have it. We finally have specs. I mean, really low RAM counts on all three of these phones, really low battery size on all three of these phones, and for those of you who say, oh, it doesn't matter as long as it outperforms my previous gen iPhone, look, it'll outperform your previous gen iPhone. Just know what you're paying for. And that's the only reason that I'm actually making this video. This easily is going to be the fattest margin Apple has ever found on any product in their lineup, in my opinion, because I would be shocked if the iPhone XS, I don't know if they've done the teardown already, I would be shocked if it costs more than two or 250 US dollars to make and they're starting at a thousand bucks. Keep that in mind. 
um, I'd be shocked. I'm not an analyst, but I know my stuff, and I know what I see here. And the XR, that actually, outside of the bionic chip and the new camera array, could be something like $150 to make, give or take. I mean, the OLED is really the most expensive thing other than the bionic chip, which since Apple has complete proprietary control of that A12 and no one else gets to touch it or use it, we'll never know what that really costs. But eventually a teardown will come out on the pricing. Uh, the market will tell us. But now you all know, four gigs of RAM, three gigs of RAM. I mean, a one plus one six, you can get a six or an eight gig RAM, uh, forget expandable storage and massive internal storage there up to only 256, can't get a half terabyte. And those are all OLED screens. The same one you're getting here, by the way, same notch, ugly notch and everything, but driven by an Android operating system with their own uh, touches added on in the software for under 600 US dollars, up to 679. And then of course, you can always come over to Samsung and get what's actually closer to worth your money. That's what I had to really update all of you on. So again, the specs are out there. The batteries are tiny. The RAM is ridiculous. And it's amazing that Apple is still getting away with basically putting a turd in a box and everyone pretending that the chili, you know, even though there's a finger in it, it tastes delicious. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.